Warning, the following video was made before Player Core 2 was released for Pathfinder 2nd Edition and so uses some options from before the Pathfinder Remaster Project. Hello YouTube and welcome to Cy Prime Productions. I'm here to help enhance your tabletop gaming experience. So, anyone out there grow up in the 90s during the console wars? For those who don't know, the console wars was a period of time in the 90s in the US when Nintendo and Sega were fighting for dominance in the home video game console market share. And it got heated, with ads like Genesis does what Nintendo don't, and Nintendo showing off how at one time you could get four free games for their console, whereas Genesis didn't give you any free games at the time. What Nintendo video game system. Super NES gives you four free games, Sega gives you no free games. Which do you choose? Of course, each console had their own mascots, and it was like night and day. Nintendo had, and still has, Mario. Mario is an overweight Italian plumber from New York who gets sucked into another world and eventually gets roped into saving the princess of the realm from a giant fire-breathing turtle. He was kind of dorky, not particularly suave. He had kind of an everyman feel. He was a reluctant hero, is what I'm saying. By contrast, Sega's mascot, Sonic, is almost everything Mario's not. He's a talking blue hedgehog with super speed. He's got a too-cool-for-school attitude, eats chili dogs, and is often cracking jokes and taunting his enemies. He fights an evil human inventor, the only human in the series, at least in the 90s. These guys are polar opposites. Mario fights a magic, fire-breathing lizard. Sonic fights a technology-based human. Mario's a little pudgy. Sonic's legs are almost comically skinny. Mario is serious and determined. Sonic is laid back and cracks jokes. Heck, even look at their colors. Mario wears his iconic red, and Sonic is blue. So then, why are their games, especially their games from the 90s, so similar? Both Mario and Sonic are prodigious leapers, able to perform jumps that would be insane in the real world. They're both known for their platformer games. Both of them start at one end of the level, move from left to right generally, and try to get to the end of the level without losing all their lives. And, more importantly, they both kind of attack in the same way. At their core, their base ability revolves around them jumping up and attacking their enemy. Mario does this by landing on his enemies, and Sonic does this by curling up into a hedgehog ball and plowing into his foes, but at the end of the day, they both jump, then attack. There are other attacks, sure, like Mario's fireball and Sonic's spin dash, but the basic attack remains the jump. So, this channel is about Pathfinder and Starfinder, so why am I talking about video game characters? Well, because a few months ago, a viewer contacted me and suggested I make a video detailing how to make video game mascot characters in Pathfinder 2e. He wanted video game mascot characters like Mario, Sonic, or perhaps others like Crash Bandicoot, and I mulled over how i do that and I realized that they were all kind of the same build at their core. Sure, they'd have different ancestries and backgrounds, but the core mechanic of how I'd get them to work remains the same. So, let's talk about it. Now, before we get started, I'll just tell you a few things. One, this is part of an ongoing series where I'm using the new, as of the posting of this video, Howl of the Wild book for Pathfinder 2e to make pop culture characters. The other thing is that this isn't going to be like my other character build videos where I go into super detail. I'm going to be doing a more broad overview of what to do with these characters because I'm covering multiple characters in one video. So, as always, when we do these build videos, let's start with the ABCs of character creation, but first, let's do step zero. Step zero in the book is to get a hold of what kind of character you want to make, so let's lay out the base concept for these characters. For the mascot build, I want a character that can make unarmed strikes, has prodigious leaping ability, and can run fast. I know Sonic has super speed, but I think we can all agree Mario is no slouch either. Also, neither of them wear armor. I mean, Mario has overalls, and maybe that counts as leather armor, but probably not. Anyway, moving on, A stands for ancestry, and for Mario, it's easy, he's a human. 
Just take whatever heritage and ancestry feat tickles your fancy. Humans get two attribute boosts that I'll put into Dexterity and Charisma, and they get an additional free language. They have a base land speed of 25 feet and start play with a one-time bonus of 8 extra hit points. For Sonic, we're going to use the new Awakened Animal Ancestry from Howl of the Wild. This ancestry is a bit strange as we get to choose between being tiny, small, medium, or large sized. Sonic's canonical height is exactly a meter tall, or around 3 foot 3, which puts him firmly in the small-sized category. Now, according to other sources, he's taller, so if you want to make him medium-sized, I wouldn't argue. Awakened animals get a boost to constitution, wisdom, and one free boost, and take a penalty to intelligence, but I'd suggest ditching those for the optional rule of two free boosts and go with dexterity and charisma, just like Mario. They start play with common and one other language, plus their int modifier, and they get a one-time boost to their hit points based on their size, so six for a small character. Also, awakened animals can hold items and wear clothes, just like normal humanoids, just to make everything easy. For Sonic's heritage, we're going to choose, surprise surprise, running animal, as that gets him a baseline speed of 30, making him a bit faster than most other ancestries. He also gets a natural attack for being an animal, we won't use this natural attack much, but since he has those spiky quills on his back, let's just take a piercing attack, like use the stats for the horn attack and just reflavor it as quills. For his first level ancestry feat, I think fascinated by society is appropriate. Sonic, despite living in a forest, loves creature comforts like chili dogs after all. B is for background, and a good background for Mario is Laborer. This gets him the bonus to Strength or Dexterity, I'll choose Dexterity, and one free boost for Strength. He also gets the Athletics and Labor Lore skills, plus the Hefty Holler skill feat. There are a few other options. For example, if you think Plumbing is more of an Engineering Lore than a Labor Lore field, you could go with the Background Tinker. Sonic is a bit trickier. He's a rebel and freedom fighter against the evil Dr. Robotnik or Eggman, depending on the translation. But he also lives in the forest with his friends, so I could see an argument for a Scout or some other nature-based background. You could also argue he could be raised by belief and choose a deity or pantheon that venerates freedom, such as the Divine Dare. For simplicity, I'll just choose Scout, which nets him a bonus to Dexterity or Wisdom. I'll choose Dexterity and a free boost. I'll put that into Strength. He gets the Survival and Scouting Lore skills and the Forager feat, which lets him survive in the wilderness. Now, moving on to the basis of this build, C is for class, and you probably know where this is going. Both Sonic and Mario fight unarmed and unarmored, so yeah, the class here is Monk. Monk gets a bonus to either Strength or Dexterity, though for these builds, I'd suggest Dexterity for both of them. Monks get the Powerful Fist class feature, which, despite the name, allows monks to make powerful and deadly attacks with any part of their body. This includes landing on people like Mario does, or plowing through them like Sonic. It could also represent other attacks from other video game mascots, like Crash Bandicoot's Spinning Attack. Monks also get the Flurry of Blows class feature, which lets them attack twice with one action once around, and a first level monk feat. I'm actually going to pick up Crane's stance here, as that lets our video game mascot jump higher and farther. Monks get 4 plus their int mod number of skills here, and I suggest picking up both Acrobatics and Athletics. Athletics lets our monk jump farther, and Acrobatics is useful for several mobility-based skill feats. Lastly, monks get a few extra things at first level. I'll put those up on screen now. And finally, both Mario and Sonic get boosts to four different attributes. I'm going to put them into Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, and Charisma. For their equipment, they aren't going to need much, mostly just hand wraps of mighty blows, probably in the form of their iconic white gloves. There are, of course, a bunch of magic items that could help them, they're just not strictly needed. Maybe get some Boots of Bounding to even further increase their speed and jump distance, though. Now, of course, this just kinda gets us a normal monk, so leveling up, we need to make sure that they get their other abilities. At level 2, monks get a skill feat and a class feat. I'll grab Dancing Leaf, as that further increases our jump distance and helps prevent falling damage since neither Mario or Sonic seem to suffer from that. 
For the skill feat, Quick Jump even further increases our jumping ability, though it isn't strictly necessary. At level 3, they get a general feat. Mario might pick up Toughness, where Sonic would probably pick Fleet. Gotta go fast, after all. They get an increase to movement speed, which, I mean, Sonic will appreciate. They also get the Mystic Strikes ability, which lets their fists count as magic, which usually isn't a problem because they should have hand wraps of mighty blows at this point. Lastly, they get to increase a skill to Expert, which is going to need to be Athletics. At level 4, they get a skill feat and a monk feat, and this is where we finally get the build to work. For the skill feat, take Powerful Leap, which even further increases jump distance, which, yes, I checked, this all stacks. For the monk feat, grab Flying Kick, which lets you jump and attack, and we finally see Mario and Sonic able to plow through or jump on top of their enemies in midair. From there, you can level up as you see fit. If you want to represent Mario's power-ups, I boost Charisma at level 5 and maybe grab Sorcerer Dedication. You know, grab the spell Ignition to represent his fireballs and then maybe grab spells like Enlarge to represent Mega Mushrooms. Sonic, on the other hand, could grab the Monk Feet Water Step, letting him run on water for a short time. And if you want to play a different video game mascot, a lot of this works out the same. Want to play Sonic's friend Tails, the Flying Fox? Be an awakened animal with the flying heritage and grab the appropriate ancestry feats to fly. Want to play Donkey Kong? Choose the climbing animal heritage. There's a lot of options out there. Well, that's it for this particular video. I just want to thank everyone who bought my NPC Omnibus book. It's been the most successful thing I've ever written by far. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. That tells not only me, but also YouTube that you like this kind of content and would like to see more. Until next time, thank you, good luck, and happy gaming.